Aleluya. 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 My dear sisters and brothers, there are certain moments in our life when too many things seem to go wrong. There's a misunderstanding in the marriage relationship. There's a problem with the children. There's a financial crisis. A failure in business or in the place of job. And all these problems strike us at one time or other. In such moments, we wonder why. We ask the question, why me? Everyone else seems to be going well. But why am I isolated by God to suffer like this? In the gospel today, Jesus is telling us, in such Moments we call unfortunate. In such moments, a plan of God could be unfolding in our lives. Hallelujah. 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 A plan of God. If it is part of the plan of God, then it is for our good. And that's what prophet Jeremiah tells us. 29.11 I have a plan for you hidden in my mind for your prosperity for your good future everything happening to us even the apparently unfortunate events are an unfolding of the plan of God Jesus is thanking the heavenly father father I thank you you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned and revealed them to the child like what are these things the sufferings in human life the burdens of human life the problems of human life these things you have hidden from the wise and the learned who are the wise and the learned? The wise and the learned are people who claim that they can find an answer for everything through the brain, the brainy people. And they will think and they will come out with reasons. And the brainy people, the wise and the learned have come up with answers for the sufferings of the humankind. The one answer they have found is, well, someone else is hurting me. There could be daughters-in-law sitting here, very angry with the mothers-in-law. Even now, keeping that anger in the heart, this bad woman who made my life miserable. There could be husbands and wives here who blame each other. The one thing Jesus said we should not be doing is to blame anyone. The one thing Jesus does not want in the sanctuary of our heart is hatred and anger. Therefore, blaming someone else is a wrong answer according to Jesus. Other people get depressed. Depressed because they imagine God is punishing me. Because of my sin. Let us know this for sure. It is not a punishing God whom Jesus has come to reveal to us. Oh no. John 3.16 Jesus came to reveal to us a God who loves us to that great extent that God sent His only Son to die for us, to make sure that we are not punished because of our sin, that we are not lost. So we cannot get depressed in the moments of our troubles and trials and struggles, imagining 
God is punishing us. There are others who blame the ancestors. An ancestral curse is falling upon you. There are some preachers I know who thrive on ancestral curses. It is good for us to know, is there a thing called an ancestral curse falling upon us? Us who are baptized in Jesus Christ. No. Romans 8. Romans chapter 8 verse 1. St. Paul said it so clearly. If you are in Christ Jesus, you are not under a curse. Shall we say praise the Lord for that? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All the curses are washed away in the waters of baptism. Some people quote the Old Testament and only the Old Testament. And Old Testament there is the talk of ancestral curses. But Jesus came down to us in the New Testament to take all the curses upon himself. And therefore we have a new ancestry. The ancestry of Jesus. We are branches. We are members. Branches of Jesus. As Jesus himself said, I'm the vine. You are the branches. We are incorporated into Christ Jesus. And St. Paul tells us, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, we are members of the body of Jesus. And therefore, all our curses are flowed into Jesus. And Jesus, he has paid the price of our sin and our curse. And therefore, we are not under our curse. Therefore, my dear sisters and brothers, when problems and trials come our way, we should never go after such wrong answers. And Jesus said clearly, this is hidden from the wise and the learned and revealed to the childlike. Who are the childlike? The childlike are those who approach to every pain from the heart. From the heart. What does a child do when there is a pain in the body, in the stomach, in the hand? What does a child do? The child will run to the mother. A heart approach. Run to the mother with confidence. My father, my mother has the answer for my pain. And the mother will hold the child close to herself, the father close to himself, and the child is comforted in the arms of the mother. Now this is the approach that Jesus wants of us. That's why Jesus said, come to me. Come to me, you who are burdened and tired. Jesus said, take up your cross and follow me. An invitation Every time there's a cross on my shoulder, I need to wait and hear the invitation of Jesus, come to me, come to me. Jesus is waiting to take that cross away from our shoulders, that pain away from our hearts. This is the approach of the heart, the approach of the children, trusting, trusting in the love in the compassion of our God. And this approach of the heart, the childlike approach, is what Jesus wants us to have because suffering is a mystery. A mystery is revealed. A problem is thought about in the brain. But suffering is not a problem. Suffering is a mystery because it is part of God's plan. Part of God's plan for our salvation, it's a mystery, it is revealed. I must wait upon God to get this revelation. And this revelation, Jesus gives us today in the gospel. Jesus said, all things have been handed over to me. We heard it in the gospel. Jesus said, Father, thank you. All things have been handed over to me. Jesus is thanking his heavenly father for you and for me. Because what are the all things? The all things handed over to the son are the pain 
and sin and sickness. And prophet Isaiah said it so clearly. Isaiah said it. The prophet said, the Savior is coming. The Savior will take upon himself our sickness, our sin and our pain. These are the old things handed over to Jesus by the Father. Therefore, when there is a pain, when there is a pain in your hand, on your leg, in your stomach, when there is a psychological torture that comes to you, you must know this is what the Heavenly Father has handed over to Jesus. This mystery is revealed to us by St. Peter in the first letter. We heard it, First Peter, First Peter chapter 4, chapter 4, verse 13. St. Peter said it, when there is a problem in your life, St. Peter says, do not be surprised, but rejoice, rejoice. The most positive attitude to suffering. We read this in St. Paul all the time. We read this in Colossians chapter 1, verse 24, Philippians chapter 1, verse 29. And we read this in St. James, St. James' letter, chapter 1, verse 2. Count it all joy when sufferings come your way. Joy. Rejoice in the moments of what we call unfortunate things happening to us. Because St. Peter tells us we are given our share in the cross of Jesus. We are given our share in the cross of Jesus. Therefore, every pain that we suffer is a share we are given in the cross of Jesus. Whether it is a physical torture or a mental strain, it's a share given to us in the cross of Jesus. What, my dear sisters and brothers, what Jesus said, all things have been handed over to me. Therefore, when you are misunderstood, and often we are misunderstood, even the best of our intentions are misinterpreted. It happens often. What am I to do? What are you to do? My dear sisters and brothers, we need to make ourselves stand in praetorium near the judgment seat of Pilate. That's where Jesus stood in agony, hearing the condemnation, the most unjust condemnation. Jesus was misunderstood. All his teachings were misinterpreted and he was falsely accused and he was condemned. And there Jesus stood shivering, listening to the condemnation, crucify him. I stand near Jesus. And I am given a little share of that agony of Jesus when I am misunderstood, when I am falsely accused, when the best of my intentions are misinterpreted, I am given a little share in the cross of Jesus. When there is a pain in my hand, a pain in my hand, I need to keep my hand on the side of the cross. That's where Jesus' hand was placed. And a nail was driven into his palm. And that nail will go through my hand as well. It's a share. The pain on my hand is a share given in the cross of Jesus. My dear sisters and brothers, now this is a mystery. My cross is connected with the cross of Jesus. My cross is connected. Every pain, whether mental strain or physical torture, every pain is a share that the Lord is giving me in His own cross. And this is a mystery, and this is what the Lord is revealing to us today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus.
Jesus faltered at one moment. The weakest moment in the passion of Jesus was Gethsemane. Jesus became so tense. He knelt, he fell on the rock, rock of Gethsemane, sweating blood. So tense he became, he could not understand why the cross of Calvary was staring into his eyes. And when he looked at it, he became so weak, he cried aloud, Father, Abba, let this bitter child go away from me. Hear the prayer of Jesus. What did Jesus pray? Let this bitter child Jesus could not see the connection of that bitter chalice with the Father. That this bitter chalice. And that's when the angel came, the comforter. The angel came, the messenger of the Father. And the angel explained to Jesus how connected his cross was with the Father. The cross was the will of the Father. Then Jesus began to pray, Father, not my will, let your will be done. Not my will, let your will be done. Because Jesus saw the direct connection of his cross with the will of the Father. And then Jesus was comforted. He became strong because he knew what he was going to carry is the will of the Heavenly Father, that cross. From that moment, even in the most cruel and atrocious moment of suffering, Jesus never became weak, did he? Never became weak. And when he was flogged at the pillar, every beating that bruised his body, Jesus took from the hands of the heavenly father. Jesus prayed, your will, that your will be done. When Pilate condemned him, Jesus heard that condemnation not from Pilate, but from the mouth of the Heavenly Father, as the will of the Heavenly Father. When the soldiers placed that cross on his shoulders, Jesus accepted that cross not from the hands of the soldiers, but from the hands of the Heavenly Father. He did not blame anyone. He did not blame Judas. He did not blame Peter. He did not blame the soldiers. He did not blame Pilate. He took everything from the hands of the Heavenly Father. And therefore, on the cross, Jesus could pray, Father, forgive them. They are not responsible. They are not responsible. Forgive them. It is your will. This cross is between you and me. This is your will. I take it from your hands. And Jesus could pray for giving them. But the purpose of this cross, the purpose of every cross, every bit of pain after the agony of Jesus on the cross, the purpose of every pain on our body, on our mind, is salvation because the cross of Jesus was meant for our salvation. Every bit of share in the cross of Jesus is also for our salvation. For salvation of someone dear to you. There are problems in our life, but let us face the problems. Let us face the problems in love. In the experience of salvation. Just know this my dear sisters and brothers. Not a bit of your pain will be wasted. Not a drop of your tear will be lost. It's all very precious. Very precious. Not a painful sigh will lose its reward. All that is very precious added with the cross of Jesus offered to the Heavenly Father. It's a beautiful story, not a story, history in the church. 
the story of St. Augustine. St. Augustine was, we call him a saint, but he was a terrible sinner living in the abject misery of debauchery and licentiousness and immorality. But then Augustine had a mother, Mother Monica. Always after that son, Augustine went from Carthage, his native place, to Rome. The mother followed. Augustine knew mother was following. By the time the mother reached Rome, Augustine fled to Milan and the mother followed. By the time the mother reached Milan, Augustine escaped to Carthage again and the mother was tired running. She went to the cathedral of Milan. In tears she prayed. There she met Bishop Ambrose. Saint Ambrose, a holy bishop, and said to him, Bishop, how long more shall I suffer? Will I see my son converted? Will I lose my son forever? The holy bishop said to Mother Monica, Mother, continue to shed tears. Don't despair. Your tears are valuable and precious. Your tears flowing down from, the, from your eyes with the tears of Mother Mary offered with the tears of Jesus to the Heavenly Father will bring salvation to your son. The bishop said, a son of tears will never be lost. And we know the rest of the story. Augustine was not lost. God intervened. What a marvelous intervention. Augustine was converted. What a magnificent conversion. Augustine became holy and holier. The Lord God revealed to him great truths. Augustine wrote volumes and volumes even today. Centuries after, the pundits of the church are waiting and praying at the insights Augustine received from God to understand the great wisdom revealed to this saint, sinner turned saint. Augustine, a shining star in the horizon of the church, but the gift of the tears of a mother. Mothers and fathers, when God pours tears into your eyes, into your heart, it is for a purpose. Stop complaining. Start offering up every drop of your tear with the tears of Mother Mary. Mother Mary became a co-savior. Offering her pain with the agony of her son to the Heavenly Father. Looking at Mother Mary, Jesus said to John, Here is your mother! An invitation to learn from the mother. Mother Mary, here is your mother. My dear sisters and brothers, let us stop complaining. Let us stop complaining. Let us offer up our tears. Parents, you are eager to give the best to your children. The best education. The best food. All the mothers have a complaint. My son does not eat. Poor boy, how much can he eat? He's stuffing the boy all the time with food, with toys, with the latest gadgets. And you are all the time running around satisfying their needs. The child asks for fruit. You run around for fruit. You find the fruity and give it to him. Then this child, the son asks for nutty. You give him nutty. Then he asks for scooty. You run around for scooty. You are stuffing your children with the latest gadgets, with the latest luxuries. Stop this rat race. Sit with them 
find time to sit with them pray with them read the word of god with them let your children know your tears are for them for their salvation you have won your children for jesus understand this every time you come for the eucharistic celebration you should have you should have a drop of tear a drop of tear to offer in that chalice a drop of tear that you shed for the salvation of your family of your husband of your wife of your children a drop of tear to be added with the wine in the chalice to be raised up to the heavenly father you are saving yourself and your family